There is so much GPU information floating around right now that I can barely even keep up. I noticed some people in my own Discord were confused about some of the news that came out on different products and even CPUs. And so I figured I would make a video kind of talking about some of the latest information you need to be aware of because right there towards the end of 2022, you had the holidays, multiple graphics card launches. Now you have CPU launches. There is just so much to talk about. So let's get into it. Now, before you buy the 7900 XTX, and I'm not saying don't go buy it, but I am saying stay far away from the reference model. If you wanna purchase a 7900 XTX, please buy an AIB model that is not using the reference design, please. I had plenty of issues with my reference design from coil line to power draw to temperature issues. I, I am not a fan of the card. I even had people in my own community try to tell me, well, you should have known better than to buy a reference model. Well, I did, okay, and it, it it's awful, so stay far away. And by the way, in, in case you think I'm making this up, the Bauer did a full analysis on the 7900 XTX and did confirm that it had vapor chamber issues with cooling. And so now a lot of cards out there are spiking up to 110 C junction temperature and they're losing performance because of it. The Bauer's latest video even showed where one of his cards stopped working on him and smoke came out of the card. That's no good. And on top of all of that, AMD has now officially come out and confirmed that this is an official issue. Now, of course, they try to downplay it and they say things like, you know, a small batch and a small performance delta and this is small and that is small. You know, they're trying to downplay it, but the reality of the situation is, the Bauer confirmed that when you're hitting 110 junction temperature, you're basically losing about 20 to even 30% in gaming performance in some games. That basically puts you below the 6950 XT in terms of overall gaming performance. This is not a small performance delta. AMD is asking you to basically look at your temperatures, confirm what the temperature is, and if you see it at 110 C junction temperature, call into the support line and basically ask them to replace your card. Now, it is great that AMD has taken ownership of this and they will replace your card, but what is not great is there are a lot of you out there, PC gamers, that are not checking your temperatures. Now, what AMD should have done was say, hey, look, here's a list of identified serial numbers that have this problem. Please check and see if you have the serial number, and if you do, contact us and we will happily replace your card. That is a lot easier for a lot of people as opposed to having to figure out how to look at your temperatures. No, it's not that hard. Join my Discord, we'll help you figure it out. But I do know a lot of you out there don't look at this stuff. And so this isn't really on you, this is on AMD, but please, if you're in the market to buy a graphics card and if for some reason you do want the 7900 XTX, stay far away from the reference model design. Now, speaking of the 7900 XTX, MSI has officially revealed their version of the card at CES 2023. Now, there isn't much to say here, except Except it is a 7900 XTX with MSI's logo and cooler and all that stuff on top of it. But this is an example of a card you could buy that is not the reference model design. And so it will likely perform better than the reference model design of the 7900 XTX. And so if you're interested in this, it is a thing, it does exist, and it is on the way. So stay tuned for that. But now let's shift gears and talk about the 7900 XT. And really the only thing you need to know here is that the card is overpriced and not selling well. So much in fact, the card is now officially below MSRP here in the United States. Multiple retailers are now selling it below MSRP brand new in the box. Now it's not much cheaper. It's only 20 or $30 off or something like that. But the fact remains, the card is overpriced it's not selling well and the price is starting to fall. Next up, a quick update here, literally an update. OBS is now at version 29. And the reason why this is relevant is because if you have a 7900 XT or a 7900 XTX, you will now be able to finally use the AV1 encoder on the card. Some people ask me how come I didn't talk more about the AV1 encoder for the 7900 XTX during my review. And the answer is quite simple using OBS, it wasn't even an option. But hey, better late than never, and so if you have a 7900 XT or XTX, you can finally use this feature with OBS 
do me a favor, let me know in the comment section down below how it's working for you. Much like the 7900 XT, the RTX 4070 Ti is both overpriced and not selling well. However, unlike the 7900 XT, the 4070 Ti has not quite been out long enough yet for us to see any type of price reduction, but I promise you, don't buy the card, let it sit on the shelf, and it will come down in price. Now let's talk about the pricing. If you happen to see the card go down in price, what is a good price? My personal recommendation is you shouldn't even consider buying the card until you at least see it fall another $100 and basically get it at a maximum of $699. I've seen all the comments, it should be $500, it should be $550. Look, the card was never gonna be that price. They try to sell it to you for $900 under the name of a 4080 12 gigabyte model. There's no way they were ever going to lower the price all the way down to $500 or $550. In fact, if you look at the 3070 Ti, the MSRP of that was $600. And then if you account for inflation, you're up to about $658. So really Realistically, the best you could have probably ever hoped for out of NVIDIA would have been $650 or $699. Now, unfortunately, they went far and well past that, and that is not okay. I do not support the pricing. Don't buy the card. But if you wait and the prices fall, and if you have the opportunity to buy the card for $650 or worst case scenario, $699, then it is somewhat okay to go ahead and buy the card. But anything above $699 is absolutely highway robbery, and I do not support it, and I wouldn't recommend buying it. Next up, we have a really cool card to talk about. We have an Asus RTX 4080, but not just any 4080, okay? This is a 4080 with Noctua fans. Now, we saw this in the past with the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3080, and right now they're confirming that it's a 4.3 slot card, which means it is a five slot card. If your card goes above four slots, it's automatically a five slot card because who, who can use the remainder of that 0.7 slot? I, I don't think anyone can, right? Now, here's the cool thing about it. The reason why this card is so big is because it has a custom vapor chamber to ensure it will be the quietest 4080 on the market while not exceeding 61.7 degrees on average temperature. So I cannot wait to see this Noctua card in action. And I'm very curious if they're gonna make it for the 4070 Ti or the 4090 even. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, speaking of MSI Afterburner, there was a story that leaked earlier today and some other YouTubers have already covered it, but unfortunately there's been an update to the story. Now the story was MSI Afterburner is basically dead. It will no longer be supported and that caused a lot of concern and rightfully so. However, we now have an official statement from MSI confirming that they do still intend on supporting MSI Afterburner. So basically, I just wanted to let you know there's been an update, it is a developing story, and as of right now, MSI is still intending to support the application. Now, one other thing I really wanted to show off because I think it's really cool is Palette makes their own version of GPUs. And if you happen to buy one of their Gaming Pro GPUs, you can now custom make faceplates for that specific GPU. They have an Elden Ring custom faceplate here. They have a cyberpunk theme. They have a Godzilla. And my personal favorite, they even have a Gundam option as well. So this is incredibly awesome. Obviously, it depends if you can even get your hands on one of these cards that specifically supports this, right? But the reason why I wanted to show it is because I think ideas like this are phenomenal and we need to support it. And I want to see more manufacturers do this because I'm all about customizing PCs. And this allows you to take it one step further. And I think that is totally awesome. Next up, we have a tweet from CapFrameX and it is a rumor, but I think it's very believable and I'll explain why. So they're claiming Nvidia is working on AI optimized drivers and it may be released later in Q1 of 2023, but they're claiming up to 30% more performance with an average improvement of around 10%. And there's no exact information at this time on which models will support this. But even CapFrameX is saying it's a rumor. If true, Nvidia drivers will be real fine wine. And that's funny because they're taking a shot at AMD there and the whole fine wine thing, which I've already talked about a lot in my last video. But essentially, I believe this could be a possibility because Nvidia has harped on AI technology. And I mean, harped on it. They, they don't stop talking about AI this, AI that, AI this and that. And so this is completely believable. And on top of that, I've had people tell me that Nvidia never supports their products after they're released, unlike AMD, but 
this would definitely prove that to be wrong. So let's see what happens. And lastly, I wanna talk about AMD's brand new CPUs. At the time of filming, it is January the 9th and tomorrow, January the 10th, the non-X version of the 7000 series CPUs will go on sale to the public. You can buy it. The 7000 series CPUs have not been selling well. Why? Well, quite frankly, you have to buy a brand new CPU, a brand new motherboard, and DDR5 RAM. You have to buy all three brand new components, and that is spending a lot of money just to get this brand new CPU upgrade. The other problem is AM4. AM4 is a phenomenal platform and it has the 5800X 3D. I have the 5800X 3D. You can look at benchmarks from various YouTubers like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unbox and you will see that the 5800X 3D punches well above its weight class. It outperforms several if not all of the 7000 series CPUs in quite a few games and in, in a few areas where it does lose, it doesn't lose by a lot. And I mean, this CPU is hanging on strong. That 3D cache is absolutely phenomenal. So the question becomes what CPU should you buy or who is the 7000 series CPUs actually for? Here's my recommendation. If you're on the AM4 platform, just go with a 5800X 3D. If you already have a 5800X 3D, you're good. If you have a 5600X or 5700X and you're looking for an upgrade, trust me, the 5800X 3D is worth it and that will save you a lot of money as opposed to going to a brand new platform. Now, if you're brand new to PC building, or maybe you haven't built a PC in many years, or maybe you're just building a brand new PC from scratch just because, then the 7000 series does make a lot of sense because of platform longevity. AMD supported the AM4 platform for many years, and now they're making the same commitment for the AM5 platform. And so if you wanna buy one motherboard one time and basically do multiple CPU upgrades on it, you can do that with AMD. You cannot always do that necessarily with Intel. That comes and goes and there are exceptions, but generally speaking, that is one of the biggest benefits of going with AMD right now. But now the question is, which one of these 7000 series CPUs should you buy? AMD is basically isolating their own product line. The X version of these CPUs really no longer make a lot of sense and here's why. Starting next month, the 3D version of the CPUs will be out. And what we can assume is that the 3D version of the X CPUs will be faster in gaming across the board. And the clocks are very similar, the core counts are the same, the thread counts are the same. From a gaming perspective, it just makes sense to go with a 3D cache. Now, speaking of cache, a different type of cache, if you're looking to save some cash, go with the 7000 series non-X CPUs. They're cheaper, they use less wattage, and because of that, they run colder. And so the non-X CPUs allow you to get the majority of the performance for less money with less power draw and with colder temperatures. And so now you have the X series CPUs smack dab in the middle of these two new CPU launches that are both, quite frankly, just better. If you wanna save some money and get colder temps with less power draw, go with the non-X CPUs. If you want as much gaming performance as possible, go with the 3D version. The X versions, they, they just don't make a lot of sense now. If AMD does a phenomenal bundle deal or massively lowers the price or something like that, that will be a different story, but for now, that's my recommendation. Well, look, I don't usually do news segments like this, so if you liked it, let me know in the comment section down below so I know to keep doing it. Also, you can let me know by smacking that like button. If you're new, get subscribed. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time, E-Rock out.